Tonight, in a two-part series, we are exploring outdoor education, how it's working for one nature-based school in Alna and now in Maine's public schools, as administrators look for safer, safer rather, alternatives to in-person learning. Last night, we showed you how it was working in a smaller district like Georgetown, where staff and parents come together to create new classrooms and outfit elementary school kids with rain gear and winter hats and gloves. Tonight, can this model work in a larger district? Well, we spoke with the outdoor learning coordinator for Portland Public Schools, equipping Maine's largest city with the gear to get outside the classroom. The color code for schools in a second Maine county is being downgraded because of the spread of COVID-19. Getting students back into the classroom safely has been a top priority for a lot of parents, teachers, and school staff. Well, the first day when the kids came in the door, we were all so thrilled to see them again, to have that face-to-face -face and in-person time to build our community back together. The Portland Public School System is responsible for more than 6,000 students from pre-K through 12th grade. At Gerald E. Talbot Community School, kids are split into two cohorts. They come to class two days a week, then learn remotely the rest of the week. And recently, the school has added new outdoor classrooms. We have some that have uh, in the woods that are just magical. The students love them. Uh, we have some that are more out in the sun, and we've got new sunshade. Can you get exactly 50 hot dog buns if they come in packages of eight? Schools like Talbot are using the space around their building to let their students breathe a little easier while focused on classwork. We can. Four plus eight. And why? Yeah. Can you explain your reasoning? The most connection happens when you are face to face and you get to work every single day with these kids and it's just so apparent and evident in our connection that we get to share in this outdoor space together. Sometimes that classwork connection looks like this. His hands are high, his feet are low, and this is how he pops the cook. But most of the time, it's almost exactly what you'd see inside a traditional classroom. And if you're not sure, that's okay. You can keep going. Our initial goal was just to get outside and do what we do indoors, outdoors. And now um, folks are starting to ask for, well, how can I teach about the fall leaves? What is the science? Um, that's going on there. And so now we're starting to look at providing curriculum for that. Our music teacher, for instance, she's been able to take advantage of these wonderful outdoor classrooms to bring her students outside to learn about the natural phenomenon that's happening around us, like the trees changing colors. And so they're singing songs about trees and the seasons, and they're able to move around more. But we couldn't do that inside. Setting up outdoor classrooms takes work and money, and there's no one-size-fits-all approach. Classes within the same building may need different things, and each building within a district is different. So high schools are definitely looking to have better Wi-Fi access outside, and I think in terms of the level of priorities for the district, we're trying to get devices into students' hands first, and then we'll tackle some of those hotspot Wi-Fi issues because there are definite times when it would be helpful for teachers and students to be able to hop onto their devices. Brooke Teller is usually the district's STEM coordinator, but now she wears a new hat. She's the interim outdoor learning coordinator, getting each school outfitted for more virus safe in person learning. We're at approximately $120,000, uh, but that outfits 5,000 students with learning kits, and we have over 156 outdoor learning sites at our 17 buildings. Some of that cost was covered with funding through the Federal CARES Act. The rest has come from some popular neighbors. Allagash has been very helpful in providing buckets, um, some whiteboards, some folding chairs. Maine Meadworks has also donated a lot of the buckets that are being used at the elementary level. We had um, the Carpenters Union 349 help build 204 easels, and that was with the help of the United Way of Greater Portland making that connection for us. Teller has also been getting some help from Ann Styers, the founder of the nature-based school Juniper Hill, which has been doing outdoor learning for 10 years now in the town of Alna. There are several of us who are consultants for the Inside Outside and for Antioch University, now educational consultants doing this work in the school. And I teach whole courses on setting up the four walls of your classroom outdoors so that teachers feel like they can. No, the workboards are right over here. Styers believes education should involve the entire community, 
And so far, with each of the public schools she's worked with, like there has been a lot of community support to get the students outside, right down to making sure each child has the right gear to stay outside, even as the weather cools down. So the administrators that I've been working with say, you know, we can't for the life of us get these young parents to come to a parent night um, or even a conference. But now that the pandemic has happened, virtually they're showing up in droves. Right now at Gerald E. Talbot Community School in Portland, the goal is to have students outside for 50% of their time at school. And it says, can you get exactly 50? That will likely change come winter, but Teller says they're working on it. Phase one was acquiring the materials to get outside. Phase two was these shade structures that we're going to have two at each building from a company called Transform It, and they've been super helpful in designing these and engineering them for us. Um, phase three is hats and gloves for our students that can't provide them for themselves. And so we are um, talking with L.L. Bean about that. Our Foundation for Portland Public Schools has a donation button on their website. Yeah. In the meantime, teachers like Allison Richards and her second grade class are happy for more time together. Myself as a teacher right now, it feels very, it, it's, it's hard to put in all the time that I would love to do to groom these spaces and get all the kids that they need. So, you know, if there are people in the community who are passionate about getting kids outside and keeping them safe outdoors to, you know, reach out to their community schools and see how they can help. Now, if you'd like to see part one of our series in which we explored the model of Juniper Hill School a little bit deeper, just head to the 207 section of our website or our mobile app. And as Ms. Richards said, if you are interested in helping your district, do not hesitate to reach out and ask.